Welcome to the wood turning workshop. As a wood turner, by now you've probably given every family member a bowl, every friend a bowl, and even strangers on the streets bowls. So today we're going to show you something a little bit different that you can give to people and impress them. How about wine stoppers? To make a wine stopper, it's pretty simple. You just need three components. You need your wood. You also need a hardwood dowel. And then you need a cork. And this is a specialty cork. It has a hole in it. Uh, you can order this from a wood turning shop, but you can't really find it at a regular craft shop. The solid corks that they have, uh, you try gluing that to the wood, it'll break off real fast and won't hold. So you actually have to be able to insert this onto a dowel. And then the dowel goes into the wood, and that gives it the strength. Well, it's pretty obvious the blank has a hole in it, and that's a 3 8 inch hole in order to accept the dowel. Now, I want to glue the dowel in here. I'm going to use some polyurethane glue, so I'll just roll a little on there. Very important, get some on the end. I'll explain that in just a second. And put it in. That'll take a few hours to set up. I use Syro... Syro... I use super glue a lot on a lot of my projects. But when it comes to wine stoppers, I started getting some failures. That type of glue will get very, very hard, and it becomes somewhat brittle. By taking it from room temperature and putting it into a refrigerator and back again, after a while, the glue starts to just break down and fail. It, it works for some people, but it just hasn't worked for me. That's why I like polyurethane glue. It's a really neat glue. It actually foams up when it dries. Uh, and it actually feel, fills every void inside that hole. Another really important aspect about it was, remember I said I wanted to get glue on the tip that I was putting into the hole? That's very important because as, if somebody takes a wine bottle and lays it on its side, the wine will touch the dowel. You can see it exposed right there. The dowel will then wick the wine up through the dowel, and if the end of the dowel that's in the wood is not waterproofed, it will come all the way up and through your turning sometimes. We're going to start by using our collet chuck to hold the wine stopper today. Go ahead and insert the dowel in there. Tighten it up back here so it pulls it in nice and snug. Move my tool rest so I have a little bit of room here. I'm going to bring my tailstock and live center up, and I want to show you something about the live center. What I've done, I've taken the point or the barb out of the live center. I just want this to give me pressure this direction. If I actually had the barb in there, as I put this in, what would happen is I'd put a hole into my blank. And then I'd have to cut the blank that much shorter just to get rid of the hole. By the way, today we're using Coco Bolo, which is an excellent wood. Rotate this, make sure I'm not going to hit the tool rest. And remember, okay, start the lathe. I got it set at a high speed because it's a little bitty tiny thing. And I'm going to start, start pulling the tool right across the wood. I think that's rounded out nicely there. Oh yeah, looks good. Uh, let's take a moment right now to talk about design. I put a lot of thought into the shapes of my wine stoppers. I want them to be beautiful, but I also want them to be usable. You have to be able to grab a wine stopper to be able to pull it off the bottle. If you make the base wider than the top, if it tapers up, you're not going to be able to grab it. Another thing I see people do a lot is they actually put sharp points on their wine stoppers. And what's the last thing you do when you put the stopper in the bottle? Ow! Speaking of sharp points, the tools we're going to be using today, parting tool and the spindle gouge. We'll start with the spindle gouge first. We'll just start off making our shape. Remember, this is spindle turning, so 
We're going downhill with the grain here on this cut. Back to this side. Taking a big cut there, but go a little easier next time. And I've got to come back and come from high to low again. That looks nice. Now I'm just going to blend in the two, where the two sides meet there. Cocobolo is a joy to turn. It has a very high oil content in it. Just a beautiful wood. It smells like cinnamon when you're turning it. It's looking really good. Okay, I'm ready to use the parting tool right now, and I want to show you a technique that will make your wine stopper look really great. I'm going to use a parting tool to cut the bottom of the stopper right now and obviously the bottom of the stopper meets the top of the cork if you look at this stopper here there is not a seam at all it's a beautiful mesh it sits flush it's right up against the wood in order to accomplish that I actually want to take my parting tool not cut straight across I want to cut in just a little bit so where the first part of the cork that meets the wood is actually the outer edge of the cork that's the way you get that perfect flush seam if you notice, we got a little bit of the polyurethane glue showing. I need to take it off also because the dowel rod has to be perfectly clean for the cork to slide up on it properly. So we'll just start rubbing the bevel with the parting tool. It's just foam. It cuts very, very easily. Now as you watch, as I go in, I want to make sure I don't cut into the dowel too much. There we go. Now I'm going to start cutting the bottom. Going to come back one more time. And I'm angling in just slightly. Excellent. I shape the wine stopper like this for a reason. I want to talk about flow and proportion. If you look at this, the base of the wine stopper is actually wider than the top right now. The center is just a little bit too thick. This just looks stubby. Now look at a wine stopper that has a proper proportion. The top is wider than the bottom, and the center is nice and narrow. It tapers down beautifully. Nice, elegant flow. So we're going to work a little bit more on this and fix it up really nice. Cocobolo is a beautiful wood. It really sands up nicely. I'm going to start at 150 and go to 600 grit. 
I'm going to turn the speed down a little bit here. Cocoa Bolo has a very high oil, oil content, like I mentioned, and if the speed is going too high, you'll clog up your sandpaper real fast. Like I said, I'm going to start off with 150, and I've got to keep it moving pretty fast so I don't get the paper clogged up. We want to put a finish on. As I mentioned before, Coca Bolo has a very high oil content in the wood. If you want to put a polyurethane, some sort of durable finish, you're going to have to take something like acetone and remove the oil from the surface of the wood. What I'm going to do, though, is actually apply a wax high friction finish. So we'll get this going at a high speed. Doesn't take very much of this. I just want to get it coated on there. Now, once it's coated on there, I'm going to put some pressure on and melt it in. And this is why I haven't removed the tailstock yet, because as much pressure as I'm applying to the wood right now, it snapped the dowel. But this is going to be gorgeous. Wait till I stop it here. This is why I like using Coca Bolo. I'm ready to remove the tailstock so we can actually finish this end of the wine stopper. High speed and very light cuts. You can hear a little, a little bit of protest from the wood right now. Hear that? Because all this weight is hanging off that little dowel rod. I just want to blend this in with the shape I've made already. As I get right close to the center, I want to go very slowly and make a very light cut because I don't want to pull the fibers of the wood out. Beautiful. I'll just sand that up by hand, apply a little more friction polish, and we're ready to take this off and put the cork on. Earlier I mentioned I really love polyurethane glue when I'm making a wine stopper because of the extreme temperature changes these things are exposed to. But in this case, I can't use polyurethane. Remember, it's a foaming glue. So if I put it on here, it'd foam out around the edges. It'd be really hard to clean up. In this case, I'm going to have to use cyanoacrylate. Yeah, got it right. You just want to use a little bit of glue. Just a couple of little beads around there. I'm using the thick version of the cyanoacrylate. I'm going to put this on, and I actually put it up in the middle because I want to spin it on and have that glue spread out the whole length of the dowel. Now, that will set up in just a few minutes, and I'm going to take that to the bandsaw and just cut off that last little bit of dowel. Now I'm going to show you how to make a wine stopper with an inset in it. The material is solid surface countertop. It's very easy to work with, but you have to mount it in a different way. And the way we're going to mount it is on a glue block. A glue block is just a piece of wood screwed to a faceplate. Everybody's lathe comes with a faceplate, so you should have one. And everybody, if you're a wood turner, should have a piece of scrap wood laying around. Now I have cut out my piece of solid surface material on the bandsaw, and I'm going to want to center it and glue it to the block. It's kind of hard to eye it up, so the way I center it, I'll just make a couple marks on here, almost like a target. And that way, when I get ready to glue it on here, I can just center it on the circles and it works real well kind of a two-part process on gluing the blank onto the glue block. I need to use some thick-set cyanacrylate glue, and I'm going to need to use accelerator. You want to have everything in place before you do this because you have to work fast. First, I'm going to put a small amount of glue on the glue block. This thick-set doesn't dry quite as quickly as the thin-set. That's why we're using that. Also, it fills up any gaps nicely, so it'll make sure, it'll make sure that we have really good contact with the blank when we put it on there. You have to use accelerator on the solid surface material. Now watch how quickly this dries. See it just coming right off of there? That's why you have to work quickly when you're gluing this onto the blank. Okay, I've reapplied the accelerator. I'm centering this up on my marks there. I've got my tailstock close. I'm going to now bring the tailstock in without a point and press that up against the block. Now I'm going to let that sit for about two minutes till it dries. That should be dry now. 
We'll just remove the tail stock, take it off the lathe. We're going to be turning like we're turning a bowl, and we're actually going to go ahead and use a spindle gouge, which we've been using already today. This step is optional, but I prefer doing it. I want to take a parting tool right now and just gently round out the blank. Because if I get this done now, I don't have to worry about it a little bit later while I'm turning the, the top of the uh, blank. Because later on, I'm going to have to part off the blank, and if this edge is rough, there's a chance I might break the solid surface material. I'm going to use a spindle gouge to shape the top of the inset. And this stuff cuts beautifully. I have the lathe running at high speed, uh, but you do have to be careful. You can actually start to melt the product, but it's kind of a compromise. If I go too slow, it's the cuts aren't as nice. You can't take a lot off at once, so you just go slowly and take a little bit as you go. All I'm wanting to do is make a nice little dome shape here. Also, I've planned this to be between an inch to an inch and a quarter wide for my insert. And I think one more cut and I'll have what I want. Well, time to sand. We sanded this to 600 grit now and it looks pretty good, but it can be improved. I'm going to use a special sanding paper. It's actually cloth backed and it has diamonds impregnated in it. Really cool. I'm going to go from uh, about 1500 grit to 3600 grit. You might notice a little bit of a wobble right now. And that's because right before I started sanding, I tightened the faceplate. I thought it was getting a little bit loose. So just keep that in mind if you're ever working with a faceplate. Anytime you tighten it just a bit, it might throw your project a little bit out around. Won't hurt anything right now, but I decided to point that out. I'm going to start with the 1500 grit. I've really slowed my lathe speed way down because if I go too fast, it'll start burning the adhesive that holds the diamond into the paper. Just gentle rubbing. I'm going to wipe off the extra dust and go to 1800. That way I'm not clogging the paper up with the dust that I just made. And you can see it's actually taking material off. I'm going to work my way through the grits all the way up to 3600. Last grit. Let's take a look at this. Really nice, isn't it? Guess what? I'm actually going to take it one step further than that. I'm going to use some plastic polish. This is really going to bring out the beauty of that solid surface material. I'm going to turn the lathe on, and I'm going to crank the speed at this point, because I need a lot of speed to get this to work. It's a buffing process. I'm using some pressure. I'm not worried about burning or melting anything right now. You're going to love this when you see it. Wipe off the excess. I'm going to use a little specialty parting tool. As you can see, this is a really tight shot here, they cut a groove in right here. And by making that groove, when you look at the tip, there's two little barbs. So when I start to make a cut with this, I'm going to etch in beautifully. It's going to make a nice, clean cut. I'm going to use this to part off the solid surface material blank. I'm going to rub the bevel and bring the tool back and you'll see it's starting to cut. I'm getting through that little bit of vibration. It's going to make a little noise. Now, I actually have to pull the tool back. I want to move it over and make what's called a relief cut. By making a relief cut, It'll keep the blade from binding while I'm parting off the piece. Go in a little bit on one cut, move it to the other side, go a little bit in. This is talking to me a bit, but that's okay. Remember on the wine stopper how I angled the cut in a little bit so the center of the wine stopper wouldn't meet with the cork to begin with? I'm doing the same thing on this. 
That way it'll lay nice and flat inside of the uh, hole I'm going to cut on the top of the wine stopper. Remember when we were parting off our spinning tops a while back? Same process. I gotta catch this thing. Just nibble a little bit at a time. There we go. Came off really nice. Last thing you have to get rid of is this little bitty nub. And I'm gonna just use a sharp tool to knock that off, just like that. Now I'm gonna prepare the stopper. We've got the stopper prepared. Now I want to put the insert into it. I'm going to use a dial gauge and just get the size of the insert. Now I'm actually going to take it and close it down just a hair to be on the safe side. I don't want this to be too big because I can't put wood back. I take the dial gauge now and I'm just going to want to gently put one tip of it against the wood. It starts to make a little bitty mark and I want to see if that mark lines up with the other tip. It does. So I, I'm centered now. Now I know from this point on in, I can start removing wood safely without making the hole too wide for the inset to go in. I'm going to use my parting tool to start making the hollow. I want to go about to where I had the mark. Okay, I've got it flat now. I want to actually go into the wood a little bit. About a sixteenth of an inch. I'm going to quickly remove all of this wood here. Okay, I'm going to stop the lathe. See how the insert's doing. Got a little ways to go. It doesn't quite fit. You want to just check this every now and then because if you make it too big, like I said, you can't put any wood back. Just want to very carefully nibble away at it. Let's take several tries. You'll get used to it. Nope, I'm going to take a little bit more off. I'm going to bring this tool rest back up. Bring this up to speed. Now I'm just going to take a little bit off. Maybe a thirty-second of an inch. Okay, stop it again. I'm going to take this and measure it. 
Oh, perfect. That's a really nice fit. Put a little finish on it, and we can take it off the lathe. On the Coco Bolo, we used a high-gloss wax finish. On this, I'm going to use some hand-rub polyurethane. I'm actually going to apply it on the lathe while the lathe is running. I've got it at high speed. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to try not to get it into the hole I just made, because it'll affect the glue bond. Okay, that's on there. I'm going to now buff it. I'm going to put some pressure on here with the towel, and I'm going to dry this on the lathe, so this finish will be cured when I'm done. Take a look at that. Beautiful. By the way, I forgot to tell you, I'm using Paduke. Pretty cool wood, isn't it? I think we did really good today. We made two different types of wine stoppers out of two different types of woods, and we even used a piece of solid surface material in the other. Two different types of finishes also. People enjoy these. They're really wonderful gifts. And as you make these, you'll start putting your own personality and your own designs into them. So until the next time on the Wood Turning Workshop, keep turning. Mm -hmm.